So we are at a middle school basketball uh, court today on top of a roof in West Seattle. I think it's gonna be really fun. We have two amazing basketball players that we're gonna get to capture. We're gonna do some action, some lifestyle, some really simple approaches to lighting and how you could take one light and change it up and make it look like it's a couple different lights or adding drama by just taking a step to the right and then moving the uh, light to the left. We're also gonna do some action with the athletes and make it so they don't have to work as hard by using a trampoline and then jumping off that. We're gonna emphasize the action a little bit more by, by having them move their body and direct them in ways where it looks a little bit more dynamic. Really create a mood with overpowering the sky and really making it dark and dramatic and really putting in what style we wanna see in the image. So now we're gonna do a really simple one light setup. Uh, we're gonna have Dari here, our basketball player, sit just right here. Uh, this is so we can kind of get to know each other a little bit and so I can kind of show you how I would use one light in a couple different si situations and really uh, use it to change the mood of the photo. So this one big light is a, is a, is a pretty large octobank and all I'm looking for right now is just fill for everywhere. I'm not really looking to shape it in any way. And as we go along, uh, we'll move it a little bit and try to get a little bit more shadow on his face and reveal a little bit more of what I want to see in the photos. So first, we're just going to put this straight on him. Uh, we could lower it even. I'll do one with and without the light on. So I'll turn it off really fast, do a shot. Uh, a little bit more to your right there, Dury. There we go, great. And that was one without it. It's a little dark. Uh, so we're gonna add a pop of light now. Turn on our light again and put it down here. We're currently at, uh, for my shutter speed, I'm at 200th of a second, ISO 100 and 5.6. It's kind of just, everything's in focus sort of. Uh, I mean, that's within him and a, and a few feet behind because we really wanna emphasize this cool metal uh, cage-like structure that's holding up the basketball hoops. Uh, let's see here. So we're gonna add that pop of light, and there we go. Uh, now we got a little bit better exposure. I would even say we could bring it up a little bit more. So we're, the power is at 6.5. It's an 800 watt strobe, and we're bringing it up to seven. Uh, it's just a little bit, a half a stop higher than what we had before. We can also change my aperture a little bit or bring up my ISO, but I kind of want to keep the ambient at the same level, so I'm not going to change my shutter or my ISO right now. Okay, great. So now I have a nice, uh, a nice looking photo where everything's just pretty lit. He's got a good skin tone. He doesn't really have any big shadows around him because I'm blending in the ambient light with my, with my strobe here but we're gonna crank things up and then we're gonna also move this around and give them a little bit more shape. Uh, Cause I, I, I like a lot of times where the light is not so direct and you're getting a more cinematic tone to the photo. Cause you're never gonna have light that just falls on you perfectly. So uh, right now I just want you to continue sitting there. You're being an awesome subject here. We're gonna move this light over to the left. Let's take a few sandbags. It's a little windy outside. When it's windy, you do want to have sandbags because uh, they're very helpful. And these modifiers can get expensive. So uh, we're going to move it over here, guys. Uh, just at a three quarter first. Let's do a three quarter. I'm going to shoot from the exact same spot. But right now, hopefully, uh, with this big source, it's really going to cover his left side still. But we're going to get a little bit more shadow on this side. Uh, yeah, you can leave your hood up and everything. Let's go ahead and drop one of the balls, maybe. We're gonna keep most of this very similar so we can show a progression as we go, and then we'll, we'll sort of liven it up and, and give some different poses and movements to them a little bit later. So that's great. All right, cool. So we still have the light pointed directly at him. Again, it's gonna be kind of a flat light coming at him. Uh, just we're looking for Seeing, we're trying to shape the light a little bit differently and see how it falls off on his, his left side. There we go again. Perfect. One more. Look off to your right. Great. Okay, let me check that really fast. Great. Now, uh, I'm gonna just uh, step over a couple feet to my right. And now I'm gonna emphasize this, this angle a little bit more because I'm moving and the light has already moved. So keep your face off that way. Great. 
Let's move your, the ball on the ground to the left side of your foot. Perfect. Right there is great. There you go. One, two, three, good. One second, let me check that out. Fantastic. So right now, uh, the front of his face is very lit, but he's got a little bit of shadow on his left side, so it, it gives it a little bit more, more drama. And if it's, I, I feel like I like to set a mood with each one of my pictures and, and find out what kind of story I want to tell. So if I want, uh, say, uh, Dury here was a college player, and uh, you know uh, we were trying to tell a story about just his life, and we want to tell a little bit more than just a basketball player. But we obviously want to incorporate that as much as possible. So these are just ways you can emphasize uh, that through lighting and through the surroundings and the environment. So I'll go through a couple of them real fast. Uh, very simple right now. So we'll start with the unlit one. So it's unlit right here. We're just looking at, again, just a basic lighting with no, no light. Then we use a little pop, gets a little color, but there's really no shadow. There's just a really light haze because we're using a really big octobank. This one is where, right when we moved it off, you can't really see the differences until you zoom in on his face. So you see the shadow gets a little deeper on his right, but because it's such a big source, it's still gonna fill that right side a little bit for now. But then we're gonna move over uh, to the right-hand side. And now is where we're gonna right, start seeing it a lot more. So you're still seeing his face lit up, and we're getting, uh, you're still getting his face, but we're getting that, that sort of that shadow on the side. And if he was wearing, um, say, like a, a red or, you know, like a different color shirt, it might be a little bit more pronounced. But I think uh, right now is, is good where we want to be at. Okay, so now we're going to move it even uh, just a little bit more over and really make it very dramatic here. Uh, in terms of just keeping it all at the same level right now, we haven't moved one thing in terms of the lighting power, the exposure, the ISO, the shutter, uh, anything at all. He stayed in the exact same spot. Uh, and mostly we're just playing around with light and seeing what looks best on him uh, as well. So we're gonna shoot right from the middle where I was before. Great, and do one looking right here. Fantastic. Do one more, hold on. I'm gonna get a little lower so I keep this fan out of the back. Good. All right, so now I'm gonna move over to that right side again and we're gonna try to like emphasize again the shadow that's over on his left side. So keep your face right there. We wanna still get a good amount of light to show his face. We don't want him to be in complete darkness because we actually want to see him. He's, he's the star of our show right now. And <laughs> he's, being, he's being very modest. Uh, so we want to be able to see him. Right now, usually I would keep his face either straight or just slightly off towards me or looking towards the light so I can keep a majority of that light on his face. So we'll try a couple of those. I'm going to come at that angle over here. Let's see. Turn your face slightly straight. There you go. You can still kind of gaze over at me. Great. Left your uh, left arm just a little bit on your leg. Uh, yep, there you go. There you go. One, two, and three. Great. Let's do one more here. One, two, and three. Let's check that out. Nice. It's very dark. Uh, you have a nice big shadow now. Uh, both his eyes are filled with light. Uh, we do have a shadow coming down right around here. It gives it a really nice look. I think what we're gonna do is do a few more. We're gonna have him look at the light and we're gonna have him look out straight. Uh, so let's do that first, great. And right now, because I'm at such an angle, I'm seeing, and when I was over in the middle, I see a nice symmetrical look and I wanted him in the middle because I, I like to utilize the environment as much as possible when I'm trying to take a picture in order to make it have a different element to it that's interesting besides just our, our, our star here. So I'm coming over here now and I, I don't really like how his head uh, comes in with the, the line behind. So I'm gonna move him a little bit to the right just so we can get him a little bit more in this square. And uh, it'll, it'll feel a little bit better for the photo. So yeah, thank you guys, perfect. Okay. Two, three, great. One more. 
Great, now look over towards me more. Great, now look at me completely. We're gonna do one just completely this way, even though his face will be mostly in shadow. <laughs> so, uh, let's see that. Fantastic, so his right side of his face is very well lit. His left side is almost in shadow. Right now, we're going to change it from our settings, which are, again, 200th of a second, 5.6 and 100 ISO. We're going to uh, crank up and use high-speed sync so we can dim down this overcast look out here and try to get a more moody feel to it. So same positions and everything. I'm gonna bring up my shutter speed uh, to 800th of a second. And we're going to move this up from seven to a nine. Uh, yep, so we're gonna do seven to a nine. Check this out really fast. We are a little dark still on him. So what we're gonna do now is uh, lose the front baffle. So I like to a lot of times use hard light when I'm shooting athletes especially. And most of the time it's to emphasize muscles. It really shapes out arms and it really, it really helps uh, give them a more of a 3D type look. So I'll end up using a lot of times hard and soft lighting together. And this is a, a similar version of that. And it also gives it a little bit more power. It's not much, but it gives it a little bit more. When you're using something like this without the baffle, it's gonna be a harder outline. But really out here, it's not gonna matter because we really don't have uh, something to shoot it against. If we were standing against a wall, you'd see a hard circle around it. But, uh, but like this, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. So we're gonna shoot it without that and see how it looks. Take that shot. Oh yeah, that looks a little bit nicer. This is great. Look out straight once. Fantastic. Now look off towards the light one time. So three different versions here. Fantastic. Okay, so right now uh, we have a really, we're, our sky's getting a little deeper. Uh, it's very overcast, so it's gonna be kind of just a gray tone to it. But if you had some really nice clouds, it'll, it'll really build up a texture back there and really look gritty in the sky. So hopefully we can get it even darker. We're getting a nice shadow that's falling off the left side of Dury. And it's kind of giving it that, again, that cinematic look. Like we're telling a story now with it. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna change the direction of the light now. So we haven't changed it really besides just moving the angle and moving my angle to create this. Uh, we're down to a, a, a little bit more dramatic sky like I wanted to, but we're gonna try to uh, change it up by angling it a little bit more overhead and giving a little bit more shadow underneath his face and really sculpting it out. So uh, let's, let's go ahead. What do you have under, underneath this, your, your sweatshirt? Just a shirt. You, you mind taking your sweatshirt off? Yeah. Cool, great. Uh, so let's come over, let's, we'll do one right here. We'll angle it down. So I'm gonna stay in that same corner position uh, away from it. And I'm just gonna come down here again. Great, so right now in this case, uh, with athletes, a lot of times I, I like to add shine to it, especially uh, someone with, with a darker skin tone. It looks really great, again, with muscles and everything and sculpting it out. So when you're taking off the diffusion, uh, you get harder light on your subject and it is gonna sculpt out muscles and it is gonna make them look more dynamic and more 3D. Right now we're gonna be using one of those and maybe later on we're gonna be adding another one to really, really emphasize those. So. Gonna shoot that same shot. Can you pull the light back a little bit this way? And just a little bit, yeah. One step over to your right too. Thank you. So a lot of times when I'm watching, you gotta watch shadows a little bit more when you're shooting with a harder surface as well because you're gonna throw a lot harder shadow. With a, with a softer light, it's not gonna be so bad and you won't notice it as much. It'll kind of just fall off, but with this, you're gonna be able to see a lot more shadow on it. So you really wanna pay attention to that shadow around the nose, especially. Uh, so right now, I'm, I'm gonna take another test shot and make sure that it's, it's not falling into a weird spot and really obstructing his face and making it look kinda of off. So here we go. We're gonna try this shot again with the light over more so we can minimize that shadow. Great. Look out straight now. Fantastic. Can we bring the ball a little bit closer to your foot right there? Thanks. Perfect. Let's do one more. Okay, so now we have uh, a nice, I think a nice shot. I like the blue shirt now. 
Uh, I think it brings him out just a little bit more and it kind of mimics a little bit of that, that uh, blue behind him, but without blending in too much. Uh, I think I want to darken it even more. So this lights, because it's a giant octobox, it's not going to really, it's, it, it takes a lot of power to fill it all up. Uh, so we're going to switch it out with an umbrella and the umbrella will intensify it a little bit more. But again, with intensifying it, you're going to get harder shadows, uh, which both help us, but we got to watch out for that extra shadow on those faces when you're directing the light like that. We're going to spread out our scene a little bit more, show the background a lot more, and also have him move. So uh, I switched lenses. Uh, I am now on a 14 to 24. I want to get a really wide shot. I, th I feel like I want to be part of the, the shot. Like I want the viewer to feel like they're, they're the one uh, guarding, uh, guarding our player here. So having him move is going to be a little bit more difficult to pinpoint the light in any direction. So I want something that spreads but also puts out a lot of light. So we're gonna switch to uh, a hard reflector. It's a, it's a P45 reflector. It's very focused. The 45 refers to the degree of actual the beam that comes out of there. The front light's gonna be uh, a big umbrella. We're not gonna use as, as such a directional one this time. This one's gonna spread a little bit more, but have sort of a similar effect where the light's getting pushed out and amplified at you. Okay, so what we really want to do, again, like over uh, exaggerated a little bit, and I'll pull you back, so just don't feel like you're doing too much. Obviously, we don't want you like carrying and stuff, like Alan Iverson, ha uh, So basically, yeah, like, and a lot of it's going to be like, I'll shoot low probably in some of this, and I don't want you to kind of step into me. Like, I want a lot of coming at me sort of thing. I want the viewer to feel like we're, you're right there. Yeah, like you're attacking, or the, the viewer is the person you're playing against. I want to make sure this hits over his shoulder. So get into that like drop down. Yeah, there you go. So when he comes down or and now try this way really fast. I want to make sure that we'll get up and over because otherwise we'll get a shadow right here. So a lot of times with, with backlighting, uh, people again, aren't paying attention to shadows. And, and it's really important because it's not a natural light most of the time. You either want to mimic a sun or just make it really uh, like a photo illustration. So. To make it not so uh, drastic or not so much of a, like, you're, you just notice it so much, you want to make sure that it's hitting your face properly and not giving you weird shadows from your shoulder, a collar, or anything else like that. So a lot of times people I see, they'll have the light a lot lower. And when he's doing this, he'll drop his shoulder down. Can you do that one more time? And uh, I'll actually do it the other way where you were, because he was like, so, <laughs> wait, hold on, which way was it? Wait, it was this way. So if he was like this, his shoulder would be up high and it would be blocking the light that's hitting here. So in other words, to counteract that, we'll just make this light go up a lot higher than we normally would. So we're not getting those weird shadows on his arms or on his face. So I'm gonna lay back on the ground here. My settings are a little changed. They're at two thousandths of a second at 3.2 aperture and 50 ISO. Okay, let's see here. So remember, don't be afraid to come to close to me. And I want you to uh, actually, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Actually, let's try to go to your right side, actually. So same thing, just go to your right and really step into it. Yeah, there you go. Pull that back just a little bit. Uh, take a half step back, because when you jump in, uh, where does, where's his sweet spot at? Right here. So right about there. So that's where I want you to end at. So I want you to come from your position into it. And remember, don't necessarily look at me uh, look just beyond me because like would if I was defending you would you would you how would you what would you be looking like if I was if I had my hand up in your face like this would you be staring me down or would you be looking to go off um, to another direction first I'm gonna set you up yeah okay good yeah so do something like that I want to see that in that sort of same game time like intensity so yeah you could look at me but then look where you're going or look where you're passing or, or look where you're you're off Since to on the next part there, Great, yeah, that's perfect. A lot of times I like to talk to my subject to find out more information. Like, if I'm not a basketball player, if I don't play football, I want to know from an expert. I want to know if this is right. I want to know if it's an authentic move because it's going to make the picture better. So him telling me this information is just helping the photo. We're really a team when it comes to this. Uh, a lot of people think it's either like, oh, it's the talent or it's the photographer, but really you're working together to create the same outcome of a great photo. Yeah. 
and kind of fade a little bit more. Like, like hesitate when you come over to this area. Okay. Don't come back so quick. Like, I want to be able, yeah. There you go. There you go. Let's go again. Good. Really pull it towards me. Yeah. Oh man, I wish I could fire faster. The trade-off for a uh, high-speed sync is that you can't shoot very quickly. <laughs> you have to shoot, uh, mostly right now we're shooting at full power, uh, right? We're at full power or are we at eight? We are at full, power. full power. So we're at 10 out of 10. So the recycling time is a lot slower. But we're trading that for uh, a darker sky uh, and also we could freeze them a little bit more uh, with the, the higher shutter speed of a two thousandth of a second. So the two ways of freezing a person in action is either using the flash duration, which will work at a lower uh, power, which gives you a higher flash duration, or by freezing with a higher shutter speed, which is what we chose to do for this. Okay, so that was exactly right. That last thing you were just doing was perfect. I'm still at the same exact uh, shutter of 2000 and 3.2 aperture with a 50 ISO. So one second and yeah there we go okay you get down a little bit more and and go oh. kind of push more forward with the ball yeah fade out don't come back in so quick yeah one more check this really fast oh that was out cool let's see that and let's do one more, watch that left hand, it's coming close. Try to keep it, where, so if you were coming over here, where would that left hand, yeah, that's, yeah. Well, you don't have to keep it there, but you pulled it close to the ball, like really close that last time. So it kind of came over really far to your, to your right. But I would say away, to, you don't need to pull it so far out, but just away from uh, the middle part, so yeah. Step down to here, yeah, like that. Okay, and one more, cool. Yeah, I like that. Like, bring it up. Uh, just, yep, yeah, perfect. But scoot a half step over that way because you're making big moves now. So go ahead. One more. Bring it out even more. One more of those. Good. Let me see that. Cool. So now we're going to try an action shot. And uh, basically, we're having, we have a lot of sun right now. So. I'm going to double up a few lights inside of the same modifier here, which is a pretty big seven foot uh, umbrella that we have. And we have both of them on at about eight out of 10 on the power and we're gonna shoot in hypersync. And so far we're at 1200th of a second at 3.5. The reason being is the sky is so bright right now. The sun is very overhead and we don't want a big blown out sky. So we're trying to bring in a little bit more of that blue. Uh, so. I'm talking through it with the, with the athletes right now, and we're trying to figure out a way to, to simplify things so they don't have to just get tired and keep jumping over and over and over. So we have a trampoline here. Uh, we're gonna have the guys, our two basketball players, jump on this trampoline, and uh, the, the idea is not for them to actually finish a dunk or anything. We just want to show that this is, it's, it's more of a photo illustration of how it's gonna look. So they don't have to complete it or anything else. We're just looking for a cool image. So I'll be talking it through uh, with each one of them, directing them a little bit, trying to get their bodies in the right positions while still maintaining the authenticity of an actual dunk. Okay. Cool. You see what we got so far? Great, that was great. Okay, so uh, I think what we wanna do even more so coming at more this way. So yeah, I would say we, we even move this a little bit more this way if we could. Again, the idea is not to connect with the rim. We don't really need to necessarily do that. It's all about your body going up to it and your body language leading up to it. So just pretend afterwards that you did dunk it. <laughs> so one second, let me get, uh, where do you end up at? You're gonna end up probably yeah, right to the side of me? Right in front of you. Okay, so I'll step a little bit this way. I'm gonna almost lay down and shoot up vertically at you. Okay, whenever you're ready. Nice. Was that in your way there? No. <laughs> cool, so we're jumping at it. How high do you get? Probably about right here is your torso? Yeah, probably Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, maybe. 
Uh, will it be a problem if we move this light just a little bit more that way? No, you think no, you run no, into no. it? Let's jump, throw it over towards the middle more. Yeah, that I'm way we can wrap the light around this side. So we're using the sun as a backlight right now, and also I'm basically shooting up right at it. But because we're at 1600th of a second right now, we're able to dial it down. And in such a wide lens, we're on a 14 to 24 millimeter. It's not really taking over the entire frame or causing a giant flare in the middle of it. Uh, it kind of acts as, I don't know, an added bonus, I think. So a lot of times when we're, when we're doing action shots, it's really hard to get the perfect shot because you're shooting usually at, uh, at a high power on your strobes where you can only do one frame every single jump. So really talking with your athlete and trying to figure out what kind of moves they would do or what kind of body positions they do before they actually jump is really important. So guiding them and directing them beforehand and, and being on the same page is really key. Uh, especially when you're working with an athlete that it could potentially injure them. So uh, again, it's all about safety and uh, trying to get it as quick as possible uh, without injuring anybody. <laughs> okay, KB, let's do it. Nice. Let's check that. You okay? Cool. And whenever you're ready. Cool, let's check that. Here, you wanna come check? Here, so I wanna show you basically so I can, uh, here, let's go look in the shade if we can, because it's hard for you to see over here, but actually right over this way. So this is what we got so far. Uh, you look like you're coming up. Uh, obviously, because I'm so wide, it's kinda like far away, <laughs> but I still like it. Uh, I can, we can even like, try to wait and maybe I can catch you just a little bit more or we could cheat and you can come a little bit more closer to me. Mm, and so, so that I'll way, then. yeah, then it'll, then I can cut the ground off a little bit more. Okay. So let's pull your, your trampoline a little, a little bit closer and I'll shoot up a little bit more vertical. Yeah. Whenever you're ready. Yeah. Remember to pull back just a little bit on your legs. Great. You know what, we can even pull in a little bit closer. Again, because this is such a wide lens, sometimes you, you uh, it's like looking in a mirror where it says like, sometimes these objects are closer than they appear. It's sort of like that when you're shooting with a wide lens. So even though it seems like it's a lot closer, it looks a lot further apart because it's so wide. Cool, try to pull that left one up if you can. Oh, that was great. I love your body position. Nice. Let's try one more real quick. You, how you feeling? I'm good. Good. <laughs> yep. Good. And then one more, and then we're going to take a look and see if we need to fix anything. One second. And... Okay, go ahead. Good. We're gonna try a couple of the similar shots and then we're going to do like maybe more of like a pass shot or, or something where you're jumping and doing some sort of dynamic move, you know, in the air. Okay. So first we'll, we'll do a few more of the same thing that KB was trying and then we'll, we'll switch it up a little bit okay. as we go. Uh, can I make 24 to 70? Uh, currently, my settings are at 2,005.6, and ISO, <laughs> this one's a tough one, low three. <laughs> uh, I think that's like 25, so it's a really low ISO, and, and again, the reason I'm doing that is because I'm trying to darken down the sky. I'm trying to make the sun not look just so bright in the sky because I'm basically pointing right at it, uh, and uh, it's kind of becoming an element of the photo. Okay, whenever you're ready, sir. Nice. Uh, okay, so that was great. I loved how you jumped off of there and both your legs were engaged immediately. Let's, let's come more at an angle, that, or more at a straight on angle as opposed to this way. And I think that would help direct the legs a little bit more. I think I'm, yeah, because they got kind of tucked behind you. So I'll move a little this way too. And then you moving that way, I think that'll help out a lot and really get it where we want to. 
Okay, whenever you're ready. Good. Cool, I like it. Yeah. Perfect, the arms were great on that last one. Now try to, again, this is so hard to think about when jumping off of a trampoline, but after you hit that jump, try to pull your legs up a little bit, like kick them back. Yeah, 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 just like that. Okay, I'm gonna try one from the side here, so. Nice, I'm gonna come under a little bit more, but same thing. Okay, go ahead. Nice. Yeah, that was great. Body language was absolutely great. Okay, so this one's gonna be hard. Again, since I'm facing at you like this, you're, you're pulling back a lot this way. So again, it's hard to contort your body in the air, clearly. Uh, okay, so yeah, when you did it this last time, I think you pulled your chin up a lot. So I know it's hard because you're still looking at the hoop, but pretend you're just looking at it this way. So yeah, exactly. Try to keep your chin a little bit down because we really want to see your face. Yeah, but the body language was great on that last one. Yeah, perfect. Nice, and I love the pause too. That's pretty good here. Good, wanna do another one right in a row? Mm -hmm. Pull that front arm down just a little bit. Good. I'm gonna come under just, or come at an angle just a little bit more. Good. Let's do one even bigger. Like pull back just far and jump as hard as you can on this one. Just explode off of there this time. You can do it. I believe in you. Yeah. Do that again. <laughs> that was easy, right? Just do it again. Hold on one second. I wasn't ready for that one. Whoa, you look. Pretty rad in that. <laughs> okay. Yes, 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 man. All I had to say was just do more. <laughs> we are here at Saul Ariel Fencing School in Seattle, Washington with the amazing Miles Chamley Watson over here. Uh, we are very fortunate to uh, photograph him today fencing. Uh, we're gonna try to capture him and throw his shadow on the wall. Uh, with one light, it's gonna be a very hard shadow. I'm gonna show you how you can really make that really crisp by moving it far away, but we're gonna get right into it. So I'm talking to Miles now about exactly how he would do this. Again, we wanna utilize our athlete. He knows this much better than me. I don't know this sport as well as he does. Clearly. Yes. <laughs> we're gonna have you jump from, uh, from right to left. Okay. Uh, what I think we want you to try to do is, uh, so where would you be starting at? Where, how would your starting position be? on guard position, okay? And then basically into that, like do you need to take a step into it or do you need to, yeah. you yeah. can take a step into it. What would be better to give you more like oomph or power? Step or, into it. Let's do that then. But I think let's have you start right where you are. So if you need to step into it, like mark that spot and we'll, we'll try to get that area. I'm gonna do a test shot really quick, right? Take two steps forward or about where you would be in the air at. Okay. And then uh, just stick out your arm really fast and pull it more this way actually because we're a little bit further away from the wall now, so. And then the hot spot should be, yeah. And then pull back right about where Chelsea is. So right now what we're doing, we're moving the light back really far because the further you get it back, the harder the source is gonna be. If we moved it in really close, we can actually just show you real quick. Ken, just push it right, right in here. You can see kind of like, well, yeah, a little bit. It kind of softens up, gets bigger, keeps getting bigger. It's not necessarily gonna be super soft because it is a hard source in, uh, anyway. But the further we get this back anyway, it's gonna be a lot easier and cleaner for those edges. So we're gonna move it back pretty far. We don't need it to be uh, super soft. So we're gonna do one practice one. I'm just gonna kind of squat down like this. And then whenever you're ready, sir. Yep. Cool. Let's check that. That's great. Uh, I like what's going on with the picture. I like the, uh, the shadow going behind him. It's kind of cool, it just adds another, another layer to it. It's getting a little bit of a reflection and killing the shadow, which I would probably lay some black down or something like that. But this is, a, a fin this is what you use for fencing, right? The metal on the ground? Yeah, it's called a strip. A strip? That's for uh, a piece. A piece? Yeah, compact And uh, flunge is also French, right? Yeah. Yep, <laughs> got it. <laughs> so right now, basically what I'm gonna do is uh, lower the light a little bit more so I can get that shadow off the ground. 
and then I'm going to get a little lower so I can get, make sure his feet are just solidly in the white area. Currently, my settings are 250th of a second, uh, 5.6, and my ISO is at 400. We're trying to just play really bright right now. Again, it's just sort of white, and we're just throwing up to get a shadow. Uh, let's see here. I like how it's going up. You see how it's coming up above him now? I would say even a little bit lower. Let's try to get it up even higher. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, we raised his foot off, off the ground. You can actually separate it as opposed to before where it was like this. So now it's this. Okay, Miles, let's do this. Ready? Yep. Cool, let's check that out. I like it. It's cool. I like the separation. I like everything else. I think I want to, uh, I want to move the light a little bit again, and I'll tell you why, and I'll tell you guys why, too. <laughs> so basically, right now, I have his arm leading into his armpit. So like, it's a really weird kind of shadow connection there. So uh, let's try it. Actually, can we try it this way once? Yeah. I just want to see what it looks like. So. Um, a lot of times just try something if, if, uh, to see if it works a little bit better if you're running into an issue. And I'll just try it really quick. And if it doesn't work, you can always go right back to it. And now the light is coming from the same side, but he's facing the other direction. Uh, can you come in just a little bit? Right there is fine, yeah. OK, whenever you're ready. Yep. Cool. Uh, I, li I like this. The I mean, I think the only problem is I want to see more of you. So I think because you're right-handed, we want to open you up still. We want to keep you at that thing, uh, that same area. I, I do like that now it looks like the uh, shadow would be in the opposite direction. So let's try to go left to, uh, from right to left again and see if that works. Whenever you're ready, sir. Cool. Let's go back, do it one more time. And uh, whenever you're ready, sir. Good. Let's move, uh, let's move the light onto the side, over to the other side. Again, I'm still having the issue with the, the sword going into your arm a little bit. There's no arm, you mean? Like, it's basically just because the light uh, is, uh, what's that? You mean the shadow from arm? Yeah. So it's just a weird, awkward shadow, basically. But How do you change this? we're just going to change positions with the light. I think it's the same sort of concept, except for the, the shadow's going to go in front of you now, so you won't be fighting with it too much. Okay, sir, I am ready whenever you are. Cool. This time, take more steps back so I can keep you right in the middle. Okay, whenever you're ready again, Miles. Cool. Great, so now I, I kind of like this more. You guys could see it. I don't have to fight with the other thing. This isn't as bad because it's not going into his actual body. It's going into the shadow. So before, again, we go back and we have this. You know, it's... It's pretty cool, but again, I, it just bothers me a little bit from that right there. Yeah. Looks like he's getting stabbed. So again, to switch it, we just switched over to the other side. That was a little too far over, but now there, that works a little bit nicer. Good. Let's check that really fast. Nice. Can you jump back, uh, take two steps back and start right uh, that's where I want you to be in the air at, right in front of me. Yes. Okay. Cool. Okay, one second, let me pre-focus. Good, and whenever you're ready. Good, let me check that out really fast. Great. Let me do, uh, get back just a little bit more, Ken. Pull back. Pull back just a little bit more. We're getting the wires up top, so we want to minimize that. Go back another two feet. We're shrinking your 13-foot guy down to 11. Uh, and now I am ready whenever you are. Same th yeah, same spot. Ready? Yep. Cool. Great. I like that one. Okay, whenever you're ready, Miles. Cool. I like it. Let's go all the way up against the wall. All the way up there. Let's just stand right on the wall. Kind of look, kind of look cool. <laughs> that way. There you go. There you go. Look to your left. Nice. Look to your right. Nice. Let's see this really quick. OK, I want to do one more shot of you jumping, but really close to that wall, OK? So same thing we were just doing a second ago, the flunge, copyright pending. Uh, then we're going to just move on after that, because I, I really like what, how this is looking right now. So 
Uh, pull to the right just a little bit more. Let's do it one more time. Two in a row. Let's do two in a row really quick. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. No, two in a row. Just jump twice. <laughs> cool. Actually, jump this way now. Go the opposite way. Yep. Cool. And one more the opposite way, and we're good. And I want to give you a good look at these. How are you doing? Cool. Yep. Cool. Uh, let's take a look real quick. So show you some of these shots. So these are tighter shadows. It's just a hard shadow on the wall now. So really tight. Uh, gives you nice contrast in your body, especially with the, t the, the dark shadow on the wall. Yes. Thanks, man. It's all you, dude. Look, that looks pretty cool right there. Yeah. I like the two-faced kind of look. That's great. That's <laughs> and then we were doing some That's wide ones sick, just to kind of show. Thank you, my friend. So now we're going to try an in-camera multiple exposure shot. I'm really excited for this. You could do multiple exposures and, or stroboscopic in a, a number of different ways. You could do it with lights or you can do it in camera. Uh, we chose to do it in camera because we have a little bit more ambient light than we'd hoped for. Uh, the way I was going to do it was with uh, using in uh, in lighting, like we can go and set a sequence up so we can put 10, 20 pops in a certain amount of time. And usually I would ask an athlete, like, how long would it take to get from here to here? And then we would take that time and set, amount of, uh, set the flashes and then catch them with a slow shutter and each one of those pops would make a still frame. But another way to do it is in camera. So uh, all new cameras basically have this function. You can go in there and do a multiple exposure. It looks really, really cool for some kind of action, especially uh, a, a lateral movement like this, it's going to look really cool. I'm going to go talk to Miles, and we're going to communicate together to find out a start point and an end point and try to fit in there uh, what we need exactly and how many frames we're going to try to capture with it. Every place he moves is going to be a new frame within that multiple frame exposure. Same thing on the other, si other side, we're using a cross lighting, no front light because, again, keeping it all up there. They're 45 degree dishes and a really hard throw. It's going to look really cool on this uh, very bright outfit here. So I'm going to jump back behind the camera, and uh, we are going to take a few shots. Let's see it. It's 2 50th of a second, F5, and we are at 250 ISO, and no high-speed sync or anything. So I'm going to pre-focus on your first spot. Ready? Yep. Good. Let me check. So let me focus again. Make sure our focus is right on. You're going to stay in that line. Uh, scoot up just a little bit more. Good. I slowed down our shutter just a little bit. I'm going to take a few frames off. Right now I have a number of shots set to 10 for my exposure, but I think I'm going to bump it down to about 6 and see how that looks instead. Uh, there's a couple other settings in your multiple exposure that you can change. Uh, they have an overlay mode. Uh, in this situation, we want things to get brighter. Uh, we don't want it to get darker because if he's dark over every spot, then the black will kind of show through and make his white not pop out. So I have the overlay mode set to light, and uh, I have the number of shots set to six. So we're going to try that in a slower, a slower style. Uh, whenever you're ready, Miles. Ready? Yep. Ah, a little too fast on my end. I'm going to go even slower. I'm going to just try to single shot it and do it on my own pace back there. All right. Uh, I'm going to take one shot, and then I want you to get going. Once you see it flash, get going. OK. Let's check that one out. It's going to take a second for it to pick up. Yeah, there we go. So I fired five times on that last one instead of six. I'm going to actually bump it down to that instead of six on my number of shots, just so I can uh, maintain that same thing as what I had before. Ready? Okay, right, cool. First frame, very strong start stance. Good. We'll move into the next frame. Once he's in there, I'm going to take it again. Now we're going to move into the third frame. Ready? One, two, three. I think I got you a little late, but that was good, though. I think we can even start further on. Here we go. Get ready in a strong starting. One, two, three. Yep. I think I could have waited a little bit later, but that actually looked pretty cool. Good. Once I fire, get going. And good. I lost it. Okay. 
I can do seven frames then on this one, I think. We're going to bump up the exposure, uh, or the number of shots, seven. And I'm going to slow down on the first half and really fire on the end. So same thing we just did, same spots. Whenever you're ready, sir. All right. Ready? Yep. Dang it. Uh, one second. Oh, this is looking cool, though. I'm moving back up to 10 frames. Good. Now go ahead. Damn it. Keep missing that last part. I, I keep thinking that it's going to go in there, but it's not. It's a little too fast. I'm going to slow down my shutter one more time, rely on my own speed as opposed to the camera speed, and we're going to lower it back down to 8 instead of 10. This is why I did this before. OK, let's try again. How are you feeling? You got a couple more in you? Yeah, a couple more. OK, cool. Let's definitely not, let, let me know. Keep, keep me updated with that. Uh, we want to make sure that we don't injure you. Uh, OK, let's see here. Pre-focus is set. Uh, I'm going to take a shot, and then we're going to get moving. Three, two, yep. Uh, jump out of the frame real quick. Like, uh, or step back over this way. I'm going to take two more shots without you in it. Because I only got through five, but I want to not have you. Take one more half step over to your left. That way, sorry. OK. Those are basically just filler ones, because it's just overlapping them anyway. So uh, we're moving around a lot on all of our, our multiple exposures. Again, this is not an exact science for these. This is an in-camera multiple exposure technique. I would usually use strobes to do this exact same thing. Uh, this is a lot of trial and error, but luckily Miles is game for it because he sees that it's a pretty cool shot, and I think it's a little different, so uh, it's worth trying. It's looking good. I think we just need to, we're just working it out and trying to find the exact positions that look the best and most authentic to the sport. So let's do the start position one more time. Once I fire that, I'm going to get the middle position when you're down and then the third position when you're up in the air. We're only firing three frames this time. Uh, all the rest of my exposures are exactly the same, 250th of a second, second, F5, and 250 ISO. So first position, nice strong stance, good. Then to go to second to third, and I'll get them. Good. Ready? Yep. Good. Let's do one more if that's OK. You know what? We can even cheat this a little bit. Do your first position, take a little bit of, uh, take a step, do a middle position, take a step, do the, the flunge. That, that way we separate it all out. It's, it may be not super realistic, but it could be a very good illustration of, of the sport. So let's try that. I'm going to take the first shot, take a half step in. Yep, right there, perfect miles. OK, this is the one. I could feel it. OK, three, two, one. Middle position, take a step in. Go in even more. I want to see you right in the middle for this one. OK, okay. so whenever you're ready. Good. I think I caught you a little early on that, but we're going to, oop. And I ruined it. <laughs> I'm trigger happy sometimes. Yeah. Miles, that was completely my fault. Uh, I'll t let's, we are a team. You know what? A good teammate holds the other teammate up. And that's what Miles is doing right now. <laughs> He's really carrying the weight for both of us here. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yep, I am pre-focused on you. Let me double check, make sure. Good. First shot, really strong. Good. Get to the middle position. Ready? Yep. Good. Let's do the end position. Remember, take a little bit more of a step. Yeah, we want to we want to get you really far over there. So whenever you're ready. There we go. And first frame. Good. Second frame. Uh, one sec. Yep. No, that's good. OK, go. Nice. I really like that one. I know. I got down low. I saw a little reflection there, so I thought that was cool. So how do you like that one? I you feel good one, about sure. that one? I think that one's good. Four one, that's good. Yeah, yeah. I like the floor in this. It adds a little extra element. So oh, I saw that a little bit, and I was like, I got to get down a little lower for this. So.
So we have Jesse now, uh, who's going to do another shot with us. We're going to utilize the space a little bit more and utilize this really cool long tunnel and all the ambient light that it has. I really like that it actually switches up uh, the color on each one of these lights. So it's creating sort of this ring thing as you go along. And we're going to stick them right in the middle of this, uh, give them a little pop with that same exact one light uh, with a grid setup with a CT half CTO on it and see what we can find with that. So first we're gonna just do a simple portrait. So if I could have you just right over right there in the middle and uh, let's frame up a shot. Cool, yeah, perfectly. So that's great. So a lot of times when I'm, I'm trying to pose an athlete, especially when I'm starting out with an athlete, I just want them to get into a natural stance. And so if they are already very good at doing what they're doing, which you seem like you've done a few photo shoots before. So he seems like he knows what he's doing here. So he has a very good natural stance and I'm just gonna shoot him in that first. And then we're gonna move into something a little bit different and coach him a little bit more along the way. So I'm just gonna get the ambient light first. I'm gonna test it out because that's really the, uh, the thing that's really gonna help make this picture shine is all the cool colors in the background and then we're gonna introduce a light. So first I'm just gonna get a shot. Uh, I'm going to try an 800th of a second, uh, or sorry, 800 ISO and 125th of a second and F4. And I'm on a 24 to 70 lens right now. So let's see what we got here. I'm going to center him. Great. Come back just a little bit, see what this looks like. Cool. Cool. I really like it. It's really colorful. Uh, I'll give you guys a little peek here. It's just the ambient color right now. I haven't added any light. Uh, I got two different versions of it. Now we're gonna grab one light, still has a grid. I want the grid on there because there's a really white wall here and if we don't have that grid, it might just spill all over it and mess up my shot, which I don't wanna do. So we're gonna put it just straight right beside me and just aim right for his face. It's a 30 degree grid, so it's pretty tight, but it'll probably hit pretty much everywhere, depending on where we're at. Yep, perfect. Modeling light really helps out when we're in a, a confined area or where not a lot of artificial, or sorry, a lot of, not a lot of sunlight is hitting. So we can see where this is all going. Uh, again, this is a hard light source. So it's gonna uh, make hard shadows. So if we aim off to the side or anything, you, you might wanna have to watch out for that. Right now I'm looking and we're getting a little hard shadow from this light, so I want you to come up just a tad bit actually. Let me see, kill this light for one second. Come up just a little bit more, right there. Now try to do that bike at the, the skew we had before, perfect. I think that looks a lot better. There's still a little bit, but I think that actually looks nice. It's just a little bit hitting the nose. Uh, but if we move up anymore, we might actually run into trouble. Okay, so now uh, our power is gonna be, we're gonna start at two, but I think we're gonna probably move up to three. Let's start at three, five actually, because we're a little bit further away than before. Uh, but I, my ISO is a lot higher, so that might be completely wrong. Let's just check it out and see. Actually, I'm not gonna go down for this one. Stay right here. We're hitting his face, good. Great, let's check that one out really quick. Yep, we were probably right. Let's jump it back down to two. Thank you, Caleb. Let's do a quick test. Should have popped it first. Great, we have a good balance. I would say even maybe uh, we can go a little tiny bit more. Just maybe uh, two more little clicks up top. So right now it's at two, again the lowest setting, but we're just gonna move it up to two two so we can have it pop a little bit more than the ambient light around it. So my settings right now, again, 1 25th of a second, F4, 800 ISO. I'm on a 24 to 70 at about 32 millimeters, somewhere in there. Okay, ready, one, two, three, good. Great, can we kind of feather off that arm? Maybe come over this way in, uh, instead, because I feel like it's bleeding off a little bit, just because the white on his arm's a little hot. And then if we can, yeah, try to get off, yeah, the, the white as much as possible if you can. I know it might be hard. Good. Great, so what I'm gonna have you do, do right now is I'm gonna catch you right there again, but what I want you to do is go back. You don't have to go very fast. Just go kind of slow, ride through, but I want your face to show like you're actually in it. I want you to think about being in this moment right now. Ken, come back a little. Cool. 
Okay, go ahead whenever you're ready. Great. So here, here's the last round we just did. So we're basically just shooting the same thing, but having where he's coming from and where he's going sort of a thing. So I was trying to do this before, get him right in front of that light. And then here's some of just the standing shots. Very similar. It just morphed into a motion shot from what we were standing at. And usually when I'm shooting action uh, to keep focus, I'll, I'll remember my spot and I'll kind of track with them a little bit with my focus so I can maintain that. Ready? Yep. Nice. Let's do another one. I want you to pass me. Can you pump back just a little bit? So just the same thing. Yeah, I'm just going to pan a little bit more with you. Yeah. Uh, I'm on manual focus. So yeah, uh, well no, not manual, I'm on autofocus, but I have a back button focus that I'm using. A lot of times when I'm shooting action in sports, I'll do that because uh, if you have somebody in place, like yesterday when we pre-focused, I actually think I turned it off most of the time, but uh, I can then like stop the focus wherever I want and not worry about my trigger actually focusing. All right, whenever you're ready. There we go. Cool. So I obviously fired a lot faster uh, just to show the speed of these things when you're at a low power. Uh, I think I was firing probably six to eight frames a second. Uh, and it held up every single time. Uh, and we panned along with it. So we got a couple different looks to this picture now. So you can come around and look at it. Here was the last couple shots. Obviously, these are not really ones I'd use. But we go back. And some other nice ones, I mean, they get a little different than what we had originally. And then we get that longer trail, which is what I really like. Uh, so even something right there is where I would really go in. Maybe crop a little bit more. Punch up these back colors a little bit because they're super cool. So we're on location now at Schmidt's Preserve Park in West Seattle. Uh, we're out in the woods. When we scouted this place, we had a lot more sun, but it's pretty overcast right now. So we're going to show how we're going to create our own sun by using a light in the back, uh, warm it up with changing the Kelvin temperature, and then we're going to have a few of our triathletes uh, run through the shots. So right now we're just kind of dialing in our lights for our shot and uh, we're going to take you over here and walk you through what we're doing right now. Okay so uh, what we're going to do is basically <laughs> basically run through this shot. You're yep. basically in the shot or the spot I yep. want. I kind of have this little gap right here where I could see your feet. Uh, I really want to see uh, like a good amount of motion. We yep. might need to probably clear that for you. So if you need to have a little bit of extra runway through, yep. but don't feel you have to run really fast. You yep. don't need to necessarily. All we need to see is the mo motion. It's kind of like when you're riding the bike, just to fake what you feel like it would be like yep. in, during a race or, or, or however natural it feel. Cool. Uh, so we'll, we'll just do a couple passes, but okay. first let me stand here. We're going to dial in this front light to balance out with our fake sun that we have up here. On our backlight, we have a uh, P70 reflector up there uh, to mimic the sun. And basically all that's doing is sort of, it's a little shorter throw, uh, 70 degrees. So it kind of spreads out a little bit everywhere. And it's just kind of backlighting and hitting a little bit of these, these ferns and giving it kind of a warm glow. Uh, we picked this spot because that's the open natural spot in the sky. So it looks a lot more natural up there. It's kind of a little lower, like it's an afternoon, uh, late afternoon. Uh, then I changed my Kelvin color balance on, on my camera to, uh, let's see here, we're currently at 8,000 in our Kelvin balance, so it's a lot warmer than this normal uh, kind of hazy gray day here in Seattle. So hopefully that'll give it a little bit more life. He's going to wear sunglasses, pretend there's sun out here, yep. uh, and also to make it like he was actually in a race. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we're going to now do a couple test shots and see what we got. Okay, so currently my settings uh, for this, uh, we set our backlight first because we really wanted to make sure that it looked like a sun. Uh, we bumped up the ISO a lot more than what I would usually use for a portrait, uh, which is 800 ISO. We're at 5.6 and right now we're at 200th of a second, which is what Canon tops out without using a high speed shutter sync. And we did that so we could turn on our lights to a speed mode so they have a faster recharge rate so we can get a couple shots off each time, even though they're at a pretty high power right now. I believe the backlight's at 7.5, and our front light is currently at 3.5, correct? Yeah. That's right, yeah. But we're gonna see if that's right. So uh, look off this way, take a half step back if you could there, 
Marv, you're doing great. <laughs> Let me check that. We're getting pretty close. I would say just a little bit more down, if you could do that, cat. Let's turn it down to 2.7. Let's turn it down to 2.5. All right, let's see. Good, perfect. So on our front, we have a P70 also. So they're just big, hard reflectors, uh, spreading out a lot of light. Uh, we kind of don't mind that it's a little hard on this one. We're gonna be far away seeing more of a scenic shot. And it's really just to give you sort of a sense of place. Okay, so basically, Jesse, you know your spot. You can kind of hit your stride at that point. Yep. I really want to see a lot of motion in that. Yep. So try to get it. Uh, we might even, if you want to kind of like walk it out a little bit in what you think would be, or even, you know, kind of jog it out, whatever you think would be helpful. But we almost want you kind of like off the ground, getting that real back push. A uh, little bit before it. So I'll, I'll point it out for you. Like there. Yeah, right when you left that right foot. Which so. foot do you want? Uh, that one gets covered if you were a little bit back more, just a little bit. Right there is perfect. Actually, I could even take a half step down. And there you go, you're right there. Oh, uh, Caleb, Cat uh, just pointed out that the light may have gotten tilted. Yeah, it's pointed at me now. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate that. So, yeah, right about there. I think that'll work out fine. Let's try that. Cool. I mean, it'll probably take a few, but it's okay. Okay, so uh, however long you need to get into that stride, and remember, again, it's the same way. We want to make it feel like it's like it's authentic. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see here. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Nice. Let me check that. Let's do it again. Perfect. That was pretty good right there. One second, and go. Yeah, basically you can get one, off, one pop off. I'm just slowing down my, uh, my speed right now. I'm currently at ISO 800, 200th of a second, 5.6. That's at 2.5. And that one's still at 7.5 up at the top. Okay, whenever you're ready, sir. Cool. Nice. Come a little bit more up. Okay, go ahead. Nice. Let's do another one. Can I get my wider camera too? My 1424? Let's go uh, again. Cool. See, let's go again. Now basically all I'm trying to do is, is, is find the athlete's timing. Uh, and try to be on the same page with them so I can get the exact motion that I need. Something that's kind of spread out and shows the action really well. All right. So I'm moving up a little higher. I think I want to see his feet just a little bit more in the frame, uh, just because we can see the trail a little nicer. So we'll see if this looks nicer or if I have to move back. And I'm going to switch up my angle and shoot vertical this time. Okay. Let's try it again there, Jesse, whenever you're ready. That was nice, yeah. Like what's going on here. Uh, I could show, well, let's do one more. Can we bump this power up just a little bit more? So let's go back up to three. So we're turning the power up just a little bit more on the front. I just want a little bit more pop, just so he really separates from the background. Good? Great. Good job, Kat. <laughs> Thanks a lot, I appreciate it. Okay, whenever you're ready, sir. Nice. Here, I'm gonna walk over to you, Jesse. We're gonna take a few looks at these. Yeah. Uh, we're going to then try to see what we need to do yeah. in order to get a better Ooh, shot out of you. Yeah. So, currently it looks kinda like daylight, right? Yeah, totally. So, go through these, that's a little tighter. So, I was thinking more like something like this, yeah. or that, I like. Yeah. Uh, I think I just want like your right arm in there a little bit more and that's all just me and yep. you timing yeah, totally. and trying to find the right spot. Uh, some of these look better than others. I think the best one would be like opened up this way, you know, okay. like as opposed to this way, it closes you off. If we can get to a point where we kind of, again, like kind of count back your stride a little bit. Yep. So then when you get to this point, we're opened up like that. Yeah, that'd be great. And that way uh, you're, it just looks a lot better okay. and more flattering cool. and 
Yeah, a little bit more. But yeah, it looks pretty nice right now. Let's keep your glass. Let's try one without your glasses okay. real quick. Yeah, it's fine. Um, how high is this? Can you point this a little bit over? Wait, where are you? Where's your spot at? Right here? Uh, no, it was back here. Oh, okay. Right here. Right here? Yeah, it's pretty good. And you're staying kind of close to this side? Or are you staying in the middle? I've been going in the middle. Can you tilt it just a little bit this way? Right there? Stop. Try your visor on front ways. I want to see if this will, uh, yep. it won't throw too much of a shadow. It might, but just keep it, I mean, don't push it up too high, but you know. Yeah, yeah, put it up. We'll see how it looks. Actually, okay. you know what, I'll just take a shot right now and see how it looks. So just stand there for a second. Look towards the light like you'd be running. Great. Perfect. We could wear that one. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. All right, let's try this again. So uh, I just switched cameras to a little wider. Uh, I'm shooting with a 14 to 24. Uh, I'm shooting at 250th of a second. And 5.6 ISO is at 500th of a second. So we switched it up just a tiny bit. The lights are still at exactly the same. Uh, and then I'm gonna try to shoot a little faster this time. All right, Jesse, whenever you're ready, go ahead. Nice, let's see that. Uh, since it's a little wider, I'm gonna come in a little bit more. I wanna make him the focus here, so I'm gonna get in there. Okay, and whenever you're ready, sir. Cool, I'm gonna just keep coming in. Okay, whenever you're ready. Here, I'm gonna step just a little to my right. Okay, go ahead. Okay, whenever you're ready. Good, let's see that. Oh, I caught you right there, but the backlight didn't fire. It's weird, it fires three, not one, and then it keeps going again. So, just because it's pretty high, but we'll try it again. Go ahead. Oh, I like that one. Let's check this. Okay, now I'm gonna get kind of right in front of you almost. Well, right off to the side. So same things we were doing before, I'm just catching you at a different angle. So go ahead. Cool. I'm gonna get down, kind of catching up from your feet. Actually, I wanna see the trail, Never mind. I wanna stay up. Again, I wanna show a little bit of the foreground uh, with these ferns kind of like framing his legs so we're really in the woods. And whenever you're ready. Cool, let me see. So it's at seven up there? Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna turn to eight five and really blast it. So right now we're just getting a little bit of extra light on this front here, on this front fern. So I'm just gonna step up a little bit over it because it's a little distracting. We're trying to move it, but we don't wanna move it too much because it's got a lot of spread back there. So if we move it too much to the right, it's just gonna have that same problem over there. We really wanna pinpoint it on the back of the athlete. So instead, I'll just walk a little bit more forward and it'll make things a lot more less um, complicated. Okay, just working on my frame. Check that. Perfect. Okay, let's go, Jesse. Great, let's do two more in a row, whenever you're ready. Okay, let me check that one more time. Uh, switch legs again. So basically when I'm firing now, because I'm a little bit further, I'm a little bit further back. So I think one, like when you're gonna open up, try to do that one step further, so. One step sooner or one Sooner, step yeah, sooner for you, yeah. Because I'm a little bit more this way, so that means the angle has changed right, just slightly. Okay, cool. cool. Okay. Whenever you're ready, sir. Is that right or no? That was perfect. Okay. Yeah, do that again. Let's actually do three more of those in a row. Yep. Ready? yep. 
Here, I'm gonna turn it down to single shot. I'm still at 250th of a second. I'm at, well now I'm at 250 ISO. We powered the lights up to nine on the back, so it's a lot brighter. Uh, the front light is, I wanna say four or five. Can you see it from here, Kat? I think it's 5.0, so it's 5.0 in the front. So we bumped everything up a lot. We dropped the ISO down. And the reason I did that is because I liked how it was looking. It was very bright, looked more natural. But now we're trying to dim everything down and just isolate the light on him, still have a really bright sun in the background. So now most of the focus is just gonna be on the trail and on our runner here. Okay, whenever you're ready, Jesse. One more? Oh, that was great, actually. I like that one. Okay, I'm just gonna get a little bit over this way. I just wanna fill out the scene a little bit more. I really like that last one though. Just keep the same speed. And whenever you're ready. Mm, one more. Go ahead. So right now, uh, again, you could see I'm a little wide, trying to show the scene a little bit more. I kept them kind of close to it. I could have spread them out and filled out just a little bit more. But I like to keep a little bit of room sometimes in case uh, the end client wants to crop it or, or move around with their, if they're doing it for editorial or for their layouts. So keeping it kind of tight but also loose at the same time. I, I want to show you, this is no light. So no light on there. This is two lights. So the backlight. And then we're in, a, we're just a few different, uh, using this as foreground, it's nice because it, it still keeps your sense of space. It still tells you that we're on a pretty tight trail. The backlight, it feels like, really, really sells it on this because uh, it just looks unnatural right there. And that looks a little bit better. And then you can go back further and we're a lot brighter. This again looks almost like it's like shot with just ambient in a way. I myself like things to be a little bit darker and more dramatic, cinematic, if you will. So that's why I decided just to bump everything up and take it down to these end shots right here and show those. So we're standing in the Puget Sound uh, ready to complete our triathlete bundle here <laughs> of shots. Uh, we're just getting in position right now and seeing where we can actually place our uh, athlete inside the water and how far we can go out. The tide is coming in so we have to work really, really fast and uh, let's just see what we can get out of this shot. So. So the idea uh, I was thinking, you've done this shot before, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. In the past, I'm sure you've thrown up water basically yeah. as you're coming out. So I kind of want to see you coming from a side. Yeah. yeah, an angle because I want to see that water yeah. flying up. We're going to do a few test shots first. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to get in a little closer without cutting my feet up. Further out? Uh, if you can, just a little bit more because it's going to be a little wider. I'm going to come over towards that way as well. I would say, uh, Jesse, scoot back just a little bit more. Are you okay, Ken? Ken, I'm gonna come. <laughs> yeah. If it is it maybe a little bit shallower, to be honest, guys. Really? To pop out. Well, come up a little bit more then. Yeah. Mostly, what I want to see is water yeah, being yeah, thrown exactly. up in the air. Yeah. So, so can you do a little bit, or get in the place where you would think? And I want to. I want to see what it looks like first. Yes, that's exactly what I want. All right. So let me come in a little closer to you. Uh, Ken, if you can jump, just actually, no, you know what, fine. come up this way a little bit more since we're shooting more side. I think that'll be okay. Aim kind of like, try not to hit the water so much, but okay. you know, obviously yep. I want to see. So you can kind of stand there for just a second while we do some tests. You got it right there. I'm going to come in closer. Okay. Uh, I think we're looking good already. I want to, I want to, I need to pump up my, uh, my, my shutter speed just a little bit more. Let me see here. It's good right now, guys. So uh, let me see your arm uh, just kind of push some water around real quick. Come in a little, turn a little bit more towards me. Yeah, less like that. I want to see a little bit more of that. And remember, again, it's, it's all about yeah. that arm going, ooh, opening up this, towards me. Open this way, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. okay, let's see here. Let me see if I can get that a little bit. I'm not ready. Um, are, you, are you ready? I can you? Not. Okay, good. You weren't pointed at him then. Okay, good. <laughs> Can you step into your shot just a little bit more, like right there? I want to test, test the light one more time. I think I want you a little closer to me. Okay. Come up just a little bit more this yeah. way. Gosh, this stuff is it's literally almost, just... It's almost done. We're kind of getting through a... A good patch of it. Yeah, okay, so we just let it go. Yeah. Just, Here, we'll do some like more tests. Let's let go. You know when a bunch come. Okay, good. 
So right now we have a two light setup. Uh, we're doing two hard sources because it's pretty bright outside. We're shooting straight into the sun. I'm kind of making it very small in the sky. Uh, we're basically just getting water, hem, and the sky right now. Uh, my settings right now are at 1250th of a second, F8, and ISO 64. Uh, I might be boosting it up depending on how we're looking. Our, our lights are at 9.1. Nine. Nine and nine. nine. They're at nine and nine. So we're pretty much, we're high speed yeah, high speed sinking on both of these. Uh, yeah. I feel okay in terms of my... It's too high. Yeah, we're gonna, it's all for the water right here. When he comes up, we really need to hit that side water. Okay, let me let me try something else for you. I'm gonna try to do. Here, can you point it out? You you got it pointed at him real quick. Yeah. Uh, we might need to pump it up a little bit more then. Uh, do you want me to come closer? Yes, come closer. Uh, point that down at him really quick. Okay, let me see. Jess, Jesse, that's look not, to your left. That's not in yet. It's okay. I'm just looking at my my backlight. Let's pump it up all the way to ten. All the way to ten. Copy. Yep. Ten. Try to, I mean, yeah, try not to hit the wall. I guess, yeah, tilt it up just a little bit. Tilt up or you want to go, like, lower? Like I don't know, because I don't want to light that too much. So, I mean, you could already see it because the sun's hitting it, so I don't think it's doing too much, but let's see here. Look that way. Okay. <laughs> here we go. Let me check the light. Look that way again like you're coming out. There we go. Perfect. Let me check this. Ken, if you could step over just half step behind you. <laughs> Sorry, man. Fine. I'm okay, and then yeah, just a little <laughs> deeper, guys. Uh, Jesse, look off to the light. Sorry. Yep. There you go. Make sure everything's looking good. <laughs> you okay. Yeah, we're good. Okay. One more test. Everybody ready? So if you need to yep. come, I would step I'll into just it. Pop straight up into it. Probably. Yes. Okay. Yep. You want me coming all the way from out of the water, yeah? Yeah, I think okay. so. Okay. I'm gonna. Ca I think so because it'll yeah. pull up the most water, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. You ready? Yep. Okay. Let me start. Okay. So get a little closer to me. Yep. Try to get that back arm or that right arm, you know, towards me back more. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yep. Try to come up out of the water more if you can. Okay. And then right here is yeah, right yeah, in right front right of me. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. Good. Let's do that again. Let's see. Ooh, that looks pretty cool. Uh, I'm trying to get the sun to be like between your arm and your head. Got it. So basically, uh, let me know where the spot yeah. is. Let me see real quick. Okay, whenever you're ready. Yeah. Okay. Oh, back a little bit. Yeah, almost there. Almost there. I don't know if we'll be able to get it. It might be too high, but it's looking cool yeah. still. So actually, stay right where you are. Are you good? Yeah, it didn't pop. Oh, okay. Okay, whenever you're ready. There it is. Nice. Okay, so we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna stay right there this time. I'm gonna come a little bit this way because I'm gonna try to get the sun a little bit away from you this time. That way it's not so just in your, I can kind of frame it out a little bit better. Okay. Let me scoot in just a little bit. I think my lens is a little wet, but whatever. That one didn't pop. It's uh, on 10. It's a little slow on the cycle. Uh, whenever you're ready. All right. Let's do it again. Ready? Yep. Really get that water. Get that back arm up. Yeah. It's, it looks cool. Okay. okay. So go whenever you're ready. Good. Yeah. Let me get a little bit more. It kind of angle more at me now. Yep. And whenever you're ready. Good. Oh, that looks dope. Let me see here. Just overemphasize that back arm. Okay. Really push out of there. Uh, just one second. That's all the way up, right? Uh, no, it's on nine. Let's go to 10. Yeah, go to 10. Okay, really, really push for it this time. Okay, whenever you're ready. Good. Nice, let me see here. Nice, that looks dope, man. Let me get a little bit better framing right now. It's kind of just squared up. Um, come, almost come right at me. Let's try that. Let's push this out of your way if you can. I would do it, but I'm trying to keep my hands clean for this. 
Okay. Okay, ready, Ken? Yep. Sorry. Come a little closer, sorry. Yep. There you go, right there. And whenever you're ready. Good. Just a same thing, but a slight turn. Just a slight, slight turn. turn yeah. Way? Yeah, but just barely. Like it was almost perfect yeah. right on that one. Okay. Now, ooh, sorry, I'm getting the water splish me. Okay, whenever you're ready. I got you too early. One more. Yeah. Just felt that one. Okay, whenever you're ready. I got you late on that one. Still looks pretty cool, but. I like the side ones actually the most. It's the most dynamic, the most yeah. most you water's coming up. Red. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So it looked like you're coming in from that way. Let me get a little tighter so I can just get right at you. Yeah. Okay, uh, are we good still on lighting and everything? For good. good. Okay, let me get down one second. Let me get a little bit more wrap on my gun. Okay, whenever you're ready. Go. Good. Let me see this. Great. You want to check this out real quick? Yeah. Sure. Tell me how this looks. Can you actually see it, or is it too bright? Oh yeah, that's dope. Cool. So that's basically a lot of what they look like. For sure. Yeah, yeah. The side looks best though, right? Yeah, totally. Cool. Uh, should we call that? Sure. Yeah. Here, let's that do just one a one standing one. Yeah. So, uh, just stay there because I think we might shoot. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're just gonna kind of do portrait. Yep. Look off. Actually, yeah. I have shoes. So I can move wherever you need. To. Okay. You're. Uh, oh yeah. Then uh, let's have you come up a little bit. Let's get them a little bit more front lit. Let's just kill that one for a second. Let's just kind of go here. Look right at. Oh, man. Come up at me a little bit more. Come up towards me more. Okay. Right there, perfect. Let me check the light real fast. Actually, uh, kill your light. Turn on your light. Killing. Look off that way. Great. Another one. Glance over. Take off your goggle a little. Put them on your head, I mean. There you go. Look off again. Yep. Look a little more this way. Good. Now look at me. Good. Let's wait till this gets out of your way. Okay, ready? One, two, three. A little bit face off that way. Good. Eyes at me. Great. Good. Wait, one more. Yep. Thank you. Little look off towards the light. Put, look like you're about to put your goggles on. Yep, one more. Okay, good. We're all ready for you. That was awesome, man. Thank you very yeah, much. You so now I'm gonna take you through our fencing shoot with uh, Miles Chamley Watson. He's an Olympic fencer. Really great athlete. Uh, very high profile athlete for Red Bull. Uh, this first part of the shoot was naturally lit. We used a big window bank on the side. Uh, and this was kind of like our warm-up shoot with him too. So a lot of shoots I say with like warm-up, I do a really simplified shoot just to get to know the, the athlete while I'm still making content. Uh, this is kind of our first shot, kind of seeing what he's doing. We obviously have a lot of stuff in this picture. I think I would take a lot of this out up here, really to really uh, take all this, this up here out. Just make it a white background. I wish, that's what I was kind of going for. I just wanted it to be him in the shadow. Uh, I don't really like this image though, so I'm gonna keep moving on. This one's a lot nicer. I think it's kind of what I was going for. Uh, again, a lot of stuff around here. I'm shooting really wide again because he is 6'4", very, very long, and then he has a long foil in front of him. So I even cropped off a little bit of his foil right here, but I am not hating it. I maybe would uh, end up taking the crop to about right here, adding a little bit uh, more room over here, just so I can then have a separation from this foil and then back into white again, so it's not leading off the image. So I think this is the one I might end up editing. I just thought this was fun and a fun little like personality shot. So I might grab that one as well because it's a pretty fast edit. I kind of like this, even though there's like not light on him. If this was all white around here, it would, and then I crop it about right here, I would like this a lot. I like the silver on the, the bottom here. I'd probably crop it into this being the bottom and the third, uh, third of the shot, and then just having the second uh, two thirds of it up here. 
But for now, I'm not gonna edit this one. I think I'm gonna move past it. I do like the shadow on his face because, again, this is really all about a graphic image. It's not necessarily about, uh, it's more of a complimentary image for the story, if there was a story on this guy. So these are some of the things we were trying with the multiple exposure. Uh, I lost this, the foil a lot. Uh, and that's, that's really because we were, we were moving around pretty quickly. Uh, we were trying a technique uh, that we, I would normally do in, uh, with strobes, but instead I did it in camera. And it was, <laughs> it was interesting. Uh, but you can get this effect in a lot of different ways. And I think this is one way to do it. I think I can pull open the, uh, the foil in Photoshop. But, uh, and then I would also blacken up up here too, because our black just wasn't tall enough for this scene. So this would be about my crop if I was gonna keep this image. I don't think I really like it though, uh, necessarily, because I think we needed one more, one more frame, like an in frame where he's connecting to the ground, like something like, I think more like when we were over here, uh, like this, like this would be our in frame, I think. Uh, and then the, the flunge or the flying lunge would be our, this part would be right before there. So I think this should have been our end point. We really never nailed it down. It was a hard part because we, we didn't get a ton of those shots because it was such a, uh, a unique style shot, but also because he's not used to working on such a hard floor and the, the floor inside there was a little bit hard for him. So I was reading the athlete and he seemed like he wanted to move on. So we kind of cut that a little shorter than I wanted to. Uh, we did end with this one, which I think is okay, but uh, actually, sorry, this one, which I think is okay, but again, not my personal favorite. I like the reflections on the bottom, but uh, the reason I like it so much is because we went from seeing the track lines uh, from the, the fencing track lines to going down even lower and not seeing them, but you get a little reflection at the bottom, and I think that's really cool. My problem, though, was I did it so quickly and we only did one image that you could see this, is a little higher than this because I bumped my camera. So, failure on my part, I'm fired. But uh, we could fix that if we really wanted to do. If the client liked this image, which I doubt they would, we would just pull this down, put them on his level, and uh, again, blacken up the top, brighten everything up, the white would really pop. I would probably take open these reds a little bit more to draw more attention to them, just to balance out these yellow shoes because they draw so much attention right now. I think if we went back and had wardrobe choices, uh, I'd probably go with a darker shoe. So this image I like, uh, I would probably come in here. Again, if I was really working towards doing something uh, that I really wanted, I would center him a little bit better. If we're at 26, I'd probably move up to 30. Let's do uh, just a, oops, I wanna actually put it on its own layer take the lock off so we can just have a clean thing right there. Let's move it to 30. And then, so we're adding that right now. So I'm gonna pull that over in a little bit, but and then so I can keep a, a separation from that. So the first thing I would do with this image is basically take all these out right here. Again, we couldn't do anything to this. I really wanted a clean white wall. It just wasn't happening. I'm gonna just take the healing brush right now, do a sloppy edit, because I can always fix it later. Just gonna hover it over everything. It's probably gonna do some weird stuff, like think forever. There we go. Again, it's kind of sloppy right now, uh, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna go back through it in a second. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Just thinks we wanna make more lines. That's not true. It's like everybody needs power lines in this world. Okay, I'm just going to take it onto my healing brush, or my uh, cloning brush now, and I'm going to take this white area right here and put it back up to 100. Clean that up right there. Push that in right there. Actually, I'm gonna take that off. So I'm not caring about the color right now. I kinda like this sort of not all ultra white. I wanna clean it up over here. Uh, take this, get rid of that thing. Again, get rid of all these lines. And really, that's basically what I would end up doing. I'm gonna extend this over here. I'm gonna clean up all these lines it's gonna take a while to take this out right here because uh, you're gonna have to make sure you're really careful with this shadow. Uh, otherwise, you could really mess it up and you don't wanna alter that pic part of the picture too much. So it's a lot of just going through and really this is just patience uh, and going through taking out that, taking out this without messing up the foil. And then at the end, it's just gonna be uh, the ground 
and him on white. And, sh and that's the, part of the point of the image that's, uh, that's the most important to me. I just wanted to see him with his shadow and a nice, clean, crisp white wall. If we had a little bit more time, I'd walk you through every single step, but basically that's it. It's just a lot of time and effort into it. Over on the right side over here, I would uh, lighten it up a little bit with the dodge tool. And I'll just show you really fast just what I would do, 10%. To put it on mid-tones, because I don't want to kill him totally. It's on a hard brush right now, so I'd soften it up all the way. And just kind of paint in as I go and lighten this up to the temperature I want. And again, a lot of blending, things like that. I would apply sort of the same sort of contrast and things that I've done on the previous pictures to it. And it will end up looking pretty nice. I think I was pretty happy with the shoots all together. Uh, this is kind of the a process that I do on most of my images. Obviously, it's a little elaborate for some more than others. Uh, it just depends on the image that I'm editing and what I really want to bring out of the image. I'm thinking about this a lot while I'm shooting it, too. So I'll shoot something in a way where I know like later on that I want to bring out some certain aspect of the photo. And I'll do that ahead of time. So then I know when I get into processing, it's going to be a lot easier and simpler. So it's very important to keep that in mind. And again. Develop a style with editing too. It's part of the process. It's not the main process. We don't want you don't want to just rely on that heavily. It's kind of like having all those tools for lighting. You don't want to use that one lighting skill for everything. You don't want to use that one editing skill for everything. <clears throat> not one picture is the same. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. That's how we do it. <laughs>